Hey everyone, Steam Deck just got another massive update bringing game recording to the stable channel. Yes, we can finally do game recording directly on the Steam Deck with no other tools required. Now, obviously I'm going to still use pass-through recording for some reasons that I'm going to show you here, but it also got a secondary update with a couple of bug fixes after I had actually started recording this. So you might see two updates if you did update already. There is a minor update on that. Not only is this bringing in game recording, but it has some general updates for Chromium builds, as well as other bits and pieces, especially around the Mac and remote play as well. I'm going to show you some remote play as this has got a nice update for AV1 streaming and fixing a couple of other issues. We've also got some Steam input updates, adding support for wired Xbox controllers for Mac, but these are generic Steam stuff, not really for the Steam Deck. Same with Linux updates as well. Overall, a fantastic Steam client update that really benefits the Steam Deck overall as well. So although they are a lot of generic stuff, I'm gonna go through some of the game recording. You'll know once this is updated, under settings, under the storage section, you should now have a game recording option. This will default to record manually, or it should do. You can have this automatic with some highlights as it does have the ability for developers to flag things like kills and other bits and pieces, which you might be familiar if you've seen some of the GeForce stuff and the way that that does auto highlighting. We've got some new Steam shortcuts as well for Steam A and Steam Y for marking and starting and stopping. And they've updated the Steam button shortcuts to include these as well as change the layout a little bit. We have quite a lot of control over the recordings, not only about the auto start stop, but it does default to high quality, which is pretty good. And you'll see this. We also cap the frame rate at 30 or 60 as well as the video height. So I'm going to leave this all as default. You can also enable recording of the microphone, force that to mono if you want to, as well as having auto gain control. I'm going to keep that off because you don't want to hear my background noise while recording. You can test this out in Red Dead Redemption with some markers and some other bits and pieces as well. So you can also get to the game recording under the game menu and that just takes you back to the main recording settings and you can also view those which I'll show you in a minute. This is also available under the quick menu it's not under the performance section it's under the actual settings menu and it's pretty much right down at the very bottom where you can toggle on and off game recording here as well so lots of options to be able to do this while you're playing and I do not recommend having this on automatically as there is a bit of a performance hit as you'll see here in Red Dead Redemption you'll see that I was pushing Pretty close to 60 frames per second before I start. Now we use that Steam shortcut to start the recording. We see that I'm dropping around five frames per second in most of these scenarios. Now you might think that that was just a bit of coincidence about the section that I've gone into here, but I'm going to show you another section and then I'll come back to this recording as well. So same type of area. I'm around the 58 to 60 frames per second mark. As soon as I turn that recording on. I'm down to the low 50s, maxing out now at 56 frames rather than that 60 as I had a minute ago. So we are going to lose between four and six frames per second in most of the scenarios when we're recording. So in high FPS games, that's not going to be a major problem. Once we have recorded them, we can either get to those recordings via the game menu or the media menu. And you'll see that the playback of this is just as good as what you were just watching on the playthrough with the pass-through recording. It's really good quality at the high graphic settings. We can skip through and you can see my marker that I put there where I ended up going a little bit rogue. But you can share these directly to another device, if you, especially if you're signed in on Steam, but sharing by the other means are limited to one minute clips. Now you can edit it quite easily within here once you get used to it. It does start editing at the point you are playing, so be aware of that. But if you keep it under a minute, you can share these clips directly to another device via your phone or via a QR link. So I'm going to generate a QR link. This generally takes around one to two minutes and I'll leave this on the screen. So if you are watching this on a PC, if you scan this, you'll be able to go and look at the video clip that I uploaded and recorded while I was making this video. Otherwise, if you want to send it directly to your PC, as long as your PC is signed in, you can just send the clip to there and it will appear in the media directory of your PC as well. So that's not limited to the one minute. You can send that across to your device as long as you have space. You can also see all these under the standard media section. So it will sit with your screenshots and other bits and pieces. And as I said, the quality is just so good on this. I really am quite taken aback about how good they have managed the on-deck recording for this. So let us know in the comments below if you're going to be using this 
and I hope to see some of your clips. So share clips via the QR code. It only worked for 48 hours. So if you have got to them in time, let us know what you think of it. And obviously share your clips as well for others to have a look at. There's also a fairly decent update to remote play. So I'm going to actually remote play from my PC. Unfortunately, passing through recording and playing on the PC that I'm actually recording on did cause some issues. You can see some major stutter here and the audio was ineligible, so I, I'm not going to blast that for you. However, this kind of stutter effect that you see wasn't all to do with the fact that I was actually recording and playing on the same PC. So I'm gonna switch over to handheld mode so that you can see the difference here. I did actually crash the first time I tried to remote play this. It just kind of got stuck on the EA screen, even though I could hear my character in game. So still some issues that it's working out here. But once I'm into the actual streaming setup, I had the same issue with the stutter, which I was a little bit disappointed about to be honest because, well, one, I'm pretty much sat next to my PC and also not far from the router with a Wi-Fi 6 mesh setup. So I do have a very good setup and obviously I was in front of my PC so I could see that it wasn't stuttering on the PC when I was playing either. So it was a little bit disappointed of how jagged and bits and pieces this was, but if I go into the settings of the main Steam Deck and go down to Remote Play, and then enable the advanced client options. It's not clear initially when you're setting these, but it does have a bunch of preset options. So I'm selecting enhanced 1080p here, and that presets the options below. So it is set to beautiful on the video quality. I'm gonna leave everything else bandwidth limit at 30, which isn't the max. Frame rate limits as auto, resolution as auto as well. I'm going to cap it at 90 frames per second on the OLED. You'd want to do that 60 on the LCD. I'm going to leave it as the HEVC video for now. But what I noticed as soon as I did this, things were really smoothed out. I wasn't getting that jitter anymore. And you can see now that the FPS counter is actually working and it's sitting around the 70 frames per second mark. Now this did feel quite good and it does look amazing on the OLED screen as well. Although there is a little bit of ghosting because I am using my phone to record this. So obviously still need a better camera setup for this. You can see that secondary update popped in while I was recording this. But with the remote play, once I had actually changed this to AV1, I do have an RTX 3080 in my PC, so this will probably be very PC dependent. Once I actually turned on the AV1 encoding, this was pretty much lag free. I had no input latency at all. All of the stutter had gone. The vibrancy of the colors on the screen were definitely much better than with the HEVC. And I could pretty much just forget that I was even streaming this from my PC as well. So that AV1 update definitely making a huge difference on the performance of remote play. And with the other cap settings, definitely smooth things out. So let us know if you've been using remote play and had some of the issues that we've seen here before as well, and how you're finding it with AV1 and with those cap settings that you saw as well. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.